This is not a normal power station. No, this is a power station with a mobile hotspot built on top of it. That's magic, I know, it's just calm down. That's right, this actually has a mobile hotspot, a 4G and 5G capable hotspot that can provide up to four ethernet connections at the same time. It even has a WAN port that you can use to hook up to your own network if you need to. I mean, it is just a straight up backup modem slash router all packed on top of a portable power station. This actually proved somewhat of an interesting video for me because I had to determine, do I want to review this as a power station with a modem on top of it or a modem with a really big battery attached to it? So the Nakoda Meta 2000. This is a 2000 watt, although this is absolutely still in development, launching on Kickstarter, links in the description. I'm not endorsing it, I'm just giving my honest opinion. But when this all started, it was 2000 watts, and now they're saying that the bulk production are gonna be 2300 watts. I don't know what all is changing internally from my review model and the actual production model that's going to give it that extra 300 watts. I just wanna let you know that the one I have is 2000, and the production is supposed to be 2300. Anyway, it has a total capacity of 2016 watt hours. It can theoretically charge up to 2000 watts, combining both the solar and the AC inputs. From the wall, you get about 1400 watts worth of charging capacity. It has a total of 13 different outlets. That includes three 20 amp capable AC outlets. On top of that, you have two regular USB 2.0 slots, two 18 watt USB 3.0, and two 65 watt USB Cs. You also get a DC 12 volt barrel plug that shares its capacity with the 12 volt cigarette adapter. And if you're thinking Jason, that only equals 11 outlets. You're absolutely right. On top of the Meta 2000 power station, it includes two wireless chargers. Now, if we flip the power station around to one side, you have one light that is a normal on, on but less on, SOS and off. But on the other side, you have a somewhat, I wanna say unique, I don't wanna say gimmick, I wanna say unique, feature that is a mosquito repellent light. I don't wanna to dive too much into the science of mosquito repelling because I am not a mosquitoologist. However, I have went down little minor rabbit holes when I wanted to go camping, just trying to figure out what options are out there to get rid of mosquitoes, or at least reduce the amount of mosquitoes. And in my past research, yellow light's key selling point for the whole mosquito thing is more of it doesn't attract them as much as regular light. And there's a whole lot of stuff about the wavelengths the mosquitoes actually see and what they use for you know, coordinating their flight path. But at the end of the day, yellow light technically, I think, just doesn't attract mosquitoes as much as a normal light. And really it's not the normal light that attracts them the most. It's usually your body heat and your breathing. But I digress, this one has a mosquito light that technically you could use if mosquitoes are not attracted to yellow as much. I don't wanna say they are or they are not. I'd hate to call it a mosquito repellent just because it doesn't technically make them go away. It's more like a mosquito less attractivizer. Wait. And then of course, on top, you have the fully functional 5G, 4G, it says 3G or 2G, wireless hotspot slapped on top of this thing. Now you do not have to have the DC or the AC turned on, but you do have to have the main unit turned on for the wireless router to work. Now having an integrated 4G slash 5G router slash actually switch, because if I plug this into my home system, it actually just lets the main system provide the DHCP and it just relinquishes control over that. I'm jumping ahead. My biggest question was, does the power station portion of this perform well enough to actually make it a consideration if you are shopping for portable power stations? Obviously, if you want a nice 4G slash 5G modem with a battery pack slapped on top of it, this is kind of your go-to thing. But in terms of a useful power station, something that you could use every day or multiple times a year, or whatever your situation is, how good can it be? Well, to be honest, I have actually been in possession of this or another one like this for quite a few months so far. And this is full transparency. Again, yes, this is a Kickstarter, okay? This is one of those crowdsourcing things where you are taking the risk if you decide you want to back it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just pointing it out because one, 
how long I've had it, it's had revisions like the 2000 versus 2300 watt output capacity, things like the modem, actually, the previous one that I had was not connecting as easily as this one was. So I think there was an update to that. And then the last part of the internals, I don't know if every single piece of hardware that I looked at when I took apart the original one, uh, is gonna be the same with this latest model. Obviously something has changed because they went from 2000 to 2300. But in the unit that I had before this, I took apart and I found out that it was running LG 21700 lithium ion batteries. Little note here, this is not lithium iron phosphate. There's just standard lithium ion. That means you have a 1000 cycle rating before you hit 80% of the original capacity. Internally, when I tested it, it seemed to be running at 56.4 volts. But one thing that I did find that I found interesting because it was kind of primary on my testing when kind of, again, jumping ahead to the whole network thing is that it had a Quicktel EC25-AFX chip in there. That was for the 5G slash 4G modem. And when I look up the specs on this modem, it seems to be able to handle 150 megabits per second down and 50 megabits per second up. And that is just theoretical max. So it handles like AT&T. I had a Verizon SIM card in there. The data plan you're on, the company you're with, all of these are gonna be variables that are gonna come into effect when you're testing your device. Me, for example, I wasn't able to get faster than 15 megabits per second, but I am also in Kansas sitting in my basement. So there's that. Yes, I realize I'm very excited to talk about the networking on this. So again, <laughs> power station. This unit offers two DC outputs, a barrel and a cigarette adapter, both of which in my testing seem to be not regulated and they drop down to about 11.3 volts, depending on how many amps you're drawing. So if you're trying to run equipment that's actually sensitive to voltage dropping below 12 volts, especially depending on how many amps you draw, that is something you want to consider. The second to last thing I want to talk about is one of the more important features that I've been looking for in these power stations, and that is the UPS feature. While it is true that a majority of these power stations allow you to utilize the battery and the inverter while charging it, that is completely different from actually having its own pass-through, let's say, relay switch that gives you the power from the wall and it also charges the internal battery, but it's not using the inverter. The reason why that's different is because it's not draining cycles out of your batteries, just sitting there being used as basically a glorified UPS. This thing was not advertised. Nowhere in the specs, the emails, anything like that, could I find anything that mentioned UPS. However, in my testing, I found that it was passing the voltage from the wall through the outlets into my testing equipment. And then when I unplugged that, well, it actually had kind of a violent shutdown series where it kind of power went out and then it went out again and then it would turn the light bulb back on. It's actually really not that great when it comes to switching over to the inverter, but it still technically has AC pass through and then clicks on the inverter when it's needed. So technically it's kind of UPS-y. It's not really UPS, but kind of. I absolutely would not recommend running a computer through this because it will definitely turn it off. However, if you just happen to get something like this and let's say you have a UPS at home already and the capacity of that UPS is not very high and the capacity of your UPS is capable of handling a, let's say, 20 millisecond switch time or longer, then this actually could be perfect because it would just be supporting a real UPS and that switch time for the UPS won't be as drastic. But computers aside, you could still run other things like fans or refrigerators using a power supply like this, because again, that switch time isn't going to cause it to fail. And lastly, on the power supply topic, I wanna to talk about efficiency and a little bit of charging. So I mentioned before that it takes up to 1400 watts in charging. Sometimes it goes a little bit, it's like 14 something something. And then it says it can handle up to 600 watts solar, giving you a total of 2000 watts charging capacity. Now I actually didn't test the solar input portion of this past just confirming that it worked, but I did test at great lengths its charging abilities and also its discharging efficiency. Things get kind of hairy here. I just want to warn you ahead of time. I know, what does that mean? Let me explain. I was having very weird, let's just go with weird efficiency results that really made me dive into finding out how this thing charges. I would normally try to give you an efficiency curve where I would feature multiple testing points that I ran usually about two times, and I would be able to tell you like a good idea of what you should be consuming with, you know, what the actual efficiency curve of the battery will be. But this one I've probably tested 15 to 20 times, and I basically had to take the best of the worst to give you the worst number, and then the best of the best to give you the best number, 
and here's what I have. At about 1920 watts, this is going to be giving you about 1460 watt hours, which is roughly 73% efficiency. Now that's the best of the worst that I found throughout multiple tests, trying to max this out to see how bad I can make it. On the flip side of it, the most efficient one that I was able to find was at 84% efficiency, which was at 560 watt draw, giving me a total of 1,680 watt hours. So in terms of efficiency, I've had a lot of power stations that are 90% to 95% efficiency. So 85% is still acceptable. It's just not one of the best. But here's where the trouble for me came in, and that is how it charges. See, I ran so many tests and I was getting so many different results, and it actually took me longer than I really care to admit to realize that the curve of which it charges is kind of shallow. Even though the screen on the front says it's 100%, it actually charges for quite a long time after it's at 100%, it'll still pull from the wall at about 150 watts. I found through extensive tests and monitoring to find out that it kind of just draws 50 watts like all the time, at least on the screen, it's actually 30 watts at the plug, but it kind of just draws 50 watts if you plug it in, no matter what. However, for anywhere between three to maybe six hours, it'll pull 150 watts, 80 to 150 watts. And those last few hours are really the most critical because I was registering almost 200 watt hours additional, and I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I was trying to keep an eye on when the numbers like actually leveled off and stuff like that. It's really hard to tell for sure because it doesn't have a hard cutoff but I got about 200 additional watt hours. So it was a dramatic change because there were some of the results that was well, it was coming back showing about 100 watt hours less than expected, if not 200. So that's where things got kind of hairy for me because it's like, not only do I have to charge it up, and this took a while to figure out, I have to charge it up, but I also have to let it sit for essentially six hours on the plug to make sure it's topped off, and then I can let it cool down and then test it. My point is that if you are charging this, just charge it overnight, like give it some extra time to really top it off to give you the best battery capacity. And I guess if we're talking about the display and this little side note, it does tell you the time of which it's gonna discharge, charge. It'll give you, you know, is your AC on, your DC on, and it has some basic air stuff that pops up just in case you overloaded or something like that. And I, I forgot about this too. It's got an ambient light feature. It's like this purplish blue light. It takes about a water or two to run which by the way, when I was talking about it being charged up, it actually uses a little colored tree on the front. So it'll start with just the stump of the tree being blue and then it goes all the way up to red at the top and a little rainbow showing it from zero to 100%. So power station conclusion, yes, it power stations. Does it power station as well as other power stations? Not really, but it's still power stations enough to be considered a power station, which is good because it is. Moving on, like I said, it's got a quick tell, 150 megabits per second capable download modem, 4G, 5G, all slapped on top of it. In fact, it's all right up here on top. So if we flip this thing around, yeah. On the back of this, it has five one gigabit capable network interfaces, one of which is designated as your WAN port, the other are designated as LAN ports. You're able to turn it on and off with a separate switch on the back. Now this is separate from all of the rest of the battery, except you do technically have to have the battery turned on or the power station turned on for you to actually be able to switch this on. So if you have this on, but then you turn the power station itself off, which you gotta press and hold it, it will turn the modem itself off. It does take a standard SIM card. However, it does come with a nice little pack of adapters that allows you to work with multiple sizes of SIM cards, you know, the micro and the mini or whatever. And it also has a little pin here that you use to stick in here that allows you to pull the SIM card tray out. That way you can put your SIM card in it. On top of that, they send you a SIM card that has, in my experience at least, the one I had had 100 megabytes worth of data on it. Essentially enough for you to launch Chrome, maybe get a speed test out of the way and then realize you need to buy more data. It's not locked or anything. You could go to the website and you could refill it. It's like $15 for two gigabytes worth of data. Or for me, I just slapped my Verizon card in there, which technically has a business internet plan. And I was able to get the same speed with the Verizon SIM card as I was the SIM card that they sent me before it shut down because I only got one speed test in and then it was done. But that was a total of about 14 to 15 megabits per second down with the equivalent 14 to 15. Actually, I think it actually got up to like 18 to 19 
megabits per second up. As for the Wi-Fi itself, it runs 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz with a total throughput of 1800 megabits per second, according to the internals. Yeah, I took it apart and I saw the 1800X. So I looked it up, it's basically 1200 for the 5.8 band and 600 for the 2.4. Now for the modem slash routing software, well, it's not bad. It's not great but it's really not bad. Looking at the landing page for this, which by the way is 192.168.100.1, you're presented with all of the normal features you would expect to see from a normal router. And I'm like kind of just saying normal in terms of like basic plus some other not basic, but still kind of expected features. I'm talking things like a generic firewall, something that's gonna protect you from DDoS attacks or WAN pings, for example port forwarding, client blocking. This one actually has URL blocking and it has a VPN, which I didn't test, but it does have a VPN option. You can set your own subdomain if you want to. You can enable or disable file or printer sharing, and you can even download your configuration and re-upload it if for whatever reason you're making updates or just expect to lose your settings. You have the ability to go in there, set what your data cap is, what day of the month it resets, and make it to where it'll cut your internet off if you go over that. So this flow control could potentially save you a bunch of money from accidental overage. Buy something that let's say is a very large YouTube video or a Windows update that maybe you just did not expect would use way more than two gigs. So overall, with all of the basic feature sets inside the router software itself, it actually makes it a pretty decent router. If you're using the modem, However, if you plug this in, like I said before, like I plugged it into my main Unify system, it just handles or just passes through all the DHCP reservation onto my Unify. So it just turns into a switch at that point. You can plug this into a different modem or a different system, or you can run it on a mobile on the go setup if you want to, and it's capable of adjusting to whatever your needs are. So with all of that in mind, I'm impressed by just the mobile hotspot. Efficiency curve, eh. UPS, eh. Regulated 12 volt, does anyone really care, eh. Mobile hotspot, however, built right into a power station, that's unique, that is interesting, and that is why I think this is pretty cool. All right, and in closing. Now I gave you the disclaimer that this is a Kickstarter. At the time of recording this, I had no idea how much this cost. That's just it, I have no idea. I don't know what to expect. I will link in the description down below. I will probably even put the price in the description down below for your reference. But I will put all those links in the description down below if you want to follow the production of this or possibly pre-order it. Again, I'm not backing it. I'm just giving you the facts that I found. Without knowing the price, it's hard to know if it's a good value. So, so guys, if you have any questions, comments, or complaints, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. Thank you very much to Nakoda for sending this out for review. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.